Oh boy, people all across Onion Land are gonna be celebrating this week because Pharaoh, the administrator of Incognito Market who exit scammed and tried to extort people just over two months ago, was arrested in New York at John F. Kennedy Airport on May 18th. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Incognito Market and Pharaoh, the admin of Incognito Market drama, this was a dark web market that was started back in October of 2020, and it quickly became one of the largest and most popular hidden marketplaces. According to the indictment, Incognito Market sold approximately $100 million worth of various unregulated pharmaceutical goods. And usually the way that these markets work is that the admins of the site they get a commission, in this case, 5% of every sale that's made. So Pharaoh would have made millions of dollars in the narcotics game. He actually did what most rappers just pretend to do. Now, instead of retiring or the market getting shut down by the feds, Incognito Market took the most dishonorable route possible by exit scamming. This is when you close down your market without giving people an option to withdraw their funds first. And Incognito Market actually went several steps further by allowing people to keep on depositing funds into the marketplace, but they didn't let them withdraw them out for about a week or two. And all the while that this was going on, the admins who had built up a good reputation over the years on various dark web forums were going on there and going on dread saying that they were trying to fix the problem but in reality they were just trying to draw out the exit scam as long as possible so that they could scam as many people out of as much crypto as possible and like i said they also tried to extort people they tried to extort the buyers and the dealers that were using incognito market by claiming that they would give whatever information they had on these vendors and on these customers to the authorities, unless they paid up. Now, when it came to light that Incognito Market was scamming people and then later trying to extort their users, the entire dark web scene, at least on Dread, turned against Pharaoh in a really strong way. People wanted revenge and man, I'll tell you, if Hitman services on the dark web were a real thing, I'm sure that a lot of them would have been hired. Like, you probably would have seen a whole parade of Agent 47s on this admin's block trying to smoke them. Now, a lot of people swore that they were going to do whatever they could to dox Pharaoh and to get him caught, which is obviously what happened now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Pharaoh. Real name, Lin Ryu Shang. I'm sure that I butchered that name, but I don't really care because he tried to butcher people's trust and confidence in hidden marketplaces, which will hopefully replace the much more dangerous street markets in lieu of governments failing to realize that prohibition is just plain wrong. Um, but this image of Lin, it actually comes from an interview that he did back in 2021 in regards to Proof of Work Shield, which is an anti-DDoS tool that he had written, which he was probably also using on Incognito Market on their Edge servers. I mean, the indictment doesn't come right out and say that, but we do know that he had Edge servers with Proof of Work DDoS protection on them to try to protect the marketplace. And well, what other software would he have used besides his own? Uh, so yeah, this guy was very much living a double life, uh, but he made several OPSEC mistakes, um, and we're going to go through some of them, which ended up with those two lives becoming intertwined. Uh, you know, I still kind of get a surprise, though, when these marketplace admins get unmasked by how dissimilar they look to classic drug lords like El Chapo or Frank Lucas. You know, these guys, they never look like someone who you would suspect, or at least to me, they don't look like someone I would suspect to be a drug kingpin. 
Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if the people that he's going to be in with prison also have a hard time believing his paperwork. But they're going to have a long time to accept that reality uh, that this kid who might weigh 90 pounds soaking wet actually put in more work and I guess earned more stripes, at least if stripes equate to crimes committed, uh, because the charges he's facing include... Continuing a criminal enterprise, narcotics conspiracy, and money laundering, which carry up to a life sentence in prison here in the land of the free. So let's talk about some lessons that can be learned from this guy's demise. The main one is really don't make too many enemies. Because obviously, if you get into this game that this guy was in, the state, the government, is going to be your enemy. And so will the competition, right? Admins that are running other marketplaces, you know, if your marketplace goes down, they get more traffic, they make more money. Those are two pretty formidable foes right there. But if you scam people, that's something that everybody hates. And I really think that him pulling this exit scam contributed to his demise, or at least his demise happening this quickly because even though the press releases and the legal documents don't mention any anonymous tips or anything like that i really think that some could have been made especially when you look at you know just how quickly he went from scamming people to being in police custody now besides the potential software connection between proof of work shield and incognito market there's also crypto transactions that connected his dark web life to his personal life. So he used Bitcoin that was traced to his illegal activities, basically Bitcoin that he had received through Incognito Market to purchase a personal domain, rs.me. Now, I believe that this is the domain that they're talking about in the indictment, um, even though they don't mention it by name or any of the domains that he had purchased by name, but they do mention that it was purchased from Namecheap, and they also mentioned that he paid approximately $20,000 for it, um, and the vast majority of which was paid for by a crypto account. So in case you don't really know too much about like domains and just like cost of them, generally the shorter a domain is, the more expensive it is, right? So those of you who are shocked, you're like, oh my God, $20,000, who would pay that much for a domain? Um, that's actually, in my opinion, kind of cheap for a domain like this. That's literally just rs.me. You know, it makes everything shorter. Emails that are coming from this domain are gonna be shorter. It's easier to remember. You know, there's a lot of value in something like that. The who is data for rs.me that you can look up for yourself also corroborates this uh, timeline for when he purchased the domain. Now, if we take a look at this guy's GitHub page again, and actually let's take a look at his GitHub profile, you can see that he describes himself as a backend and blockchain engineer and as a Monero enthusiast. This is basically the job description of a hidden marketplace administrator, just in, you know, I guess normal terms, right? <laughs> and the, the irony here gets even sweeter with him trying to hide in plain sight. This is the last tweet that he sent from his Twitter account on May 18th, I guess right before he was arrested, uh, talking about an analysis on crypto traffic size in USD, excluding Monero, between dark net markets and fund sources. Special thanks to Chain Analysis. And then in this image here, uh, he's showing, you know, basically all these different marketplaces that, and then exchanges over here that the money's going through. And then here we have the incognito market at the very bottom. So there's a lot of low-key self-snitching that's going on here. I mean, anyone that's in law enforcement that investigates crime related to crypto would see these social media profiles, both his Twitter and especially on his GitHub account. Because, I mean, you look at his most popular projects, it's the Proof of Work Shield, 
Monero Merchant, and then Chat NT, an anonymous peer-to-peer -peer chat application. It's like, dude, all of this is stuff that would be used to run a hidden marketplace. Anyone who's investigating this would look at <laughs> this GitHub account and say, hmm, okay, this is an account of interest. But it gets even worse. This guy made the classic OPSEC mistake of using fucking Google to make searches related to incognito market that line up perfectly with changes that he made to the marketplace. So if we take a look at the indictment, there were searches around May 7th, 2021, that Lynn was using his personal email account, so a personal Gmail account for making Google searches about one pixel attacks for fooling deep neural networks on GitHub. So this would have been in relation to DDoS protection on his website. Um, then he's searching about how to build a casino, right? So they say this is in relation to the Marketplace One Casino, AKA the Incognito Market Casino that they ran for some time. Um, and then there's some searches about the three-way chat feature. Okay, so that's another thing that we even saw on his GitHub uh, that he implemented. And then um, I think there's another one here where they talked about CryptoPunk. So yeah, here it is. So February 7, 2022, he's searching about CryptoPunk generators in JavaScript. And then later on, the marketplace added the CryptoPunk avatars that generate unique icons to represent you. And then down a little bit further is my favorite one. So <laughs> reading this, right, on or about July 19th, 2022, uh, the feds had a search warrant to image the server. And in order to execute that search warrant, the FBI took Marketplace One server, aka Incognito Market server, offline at approximately, um, this is like 1130. And then on July 20th, at like 18 minutes after midnight uh, UTC. And you can see he's frantically searching. So 18 minutes, uh, you know, 12, like 18, uh, 12, 19, 12, 20, 12, 23. He's searching on Gmail. The admin is searching on, uh, or not on Gmail, but he's searching on Google while logged into his Gmail account. So this is why it's so stupid because every single search he's making is getting logged to a Google account, which of course Google is gonna cooperate with the feds when they subpoena your Google account. <laughs> he's trying to um, troubleshoot the server being crashed. Like imagine how hilarious it would have been if while this guy is frantically searching in the middle of the night how to fix his offline server, the FBI just managed to push like a browser notification to him that says, hey man, um, you know, we're just trying to gather some evidence, bro. The server's gonna be back online in like five minutes, just chill. <laughs> like I can't even imagine why you would even have a Gmail account if you're a dark web admin, let alone why would you make Google searches that are related to the marketplace while you're logged into it? Like, oh my gosh. It's literally the same OPSEC mistake that Ross Ulbrich made when he was starting up the Silk Road. He used his Gmail account to create a Stack Overflow account where he was seeking advice for building his website. And then he used the same Gmail to create an account on Shroomery forums so that he could advertise the Silk Road. It just blows my mind, man. Like, how can criminals make these kinds of obsec mistakes? It's it's honestly, in my opinion, it's honestly worse than when street criminals are doing drive-bys on Instagram Live. Because you would expect someone who's doing this crime on the dark web that's like college educated and stuff like that to know better. But alas. Another dark web admin bites the dust, and it's one that I'm actually glad about for once. And if you're glad about this arrest and you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, base.win, where you can get awesome merch and accessories for your phone or computer. 10% discount for paying in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.